have a user sign-up form here, which is rather long. There are a lot of fields, which can be quite intimidating to a user and might scare them away. Now, one option when you're faced with a long form is to turn it into a multi-step form or wizard. Probably the easiest way to make a wizard is using JavaScript. This way you can keep everything on the client side, so if you have a long form, you can just use some JavaScript to turn it into a multi-step form. Everything is still on the client side, and that way you don't have to change your Rails application at all. However, this isn't always the best option. You might need the data to be more persistent where each step is stored in the Rails app, or you might want to make it more dynamic so the steps change depending on the Rails app and add validations and so on. So if you need to manage a wizard through a Rails app, consider using the Wicked Gem by Richard Sneeman. This adds some behavior to a Rails controller to allow you to turn it into a multi-step process. Let me show you how it works here. The first step is to go to your long form and to strip it down to as few fields as possible. A good rule of thumb is to only require the information necessary for the user to access the record in the future. In the case of a user signup form, that would be the authentication, so here is an email and password fields will need to stay. Everything else can go on to separate steps in our wizard. So here's what the view template looks like for that user signup form. And I'm just going to strip out all the fields in here except for the email and password. And now reload the page. And so this simplified form will be our first step in the wizard. Now at this point, it's a good idea to ask yourself, do I really need a wizard? We could just have a separate edit profile page with those extra fields there. But I'm going to assume that a wizard is the best user experience for your situation and continue on. So let's add the wicked gem to this application. In the bottom of my gem file, I'm just going to call gem wicked, and you'll need to run the bundle command to install it. Next, I'm going to generate a new controller called user steps. This way we have a controller dedicated to managing the steps for the wizard. By the way, you can name this controller anything you want. Wicked doesn't really care. Next, I'll go inside of my routes file here and add a new resources line for that user steps controller we generated. And then I'll go inside that controller. And in here, I'll add a new line to include the wicked wizard module provided by the gem. And this gives us a steps method that we can use to define which other steps we want in the form process after the user is created. So uh, what we want to do is add two steps in here for the rest of the form. One is for the personal information and one is for the more social information, such as the GitHub handle, the Twitter username, and so on. Now this controller is expected to respond to the show action where it should render out a given step of the wizard process. And there's a handy little method to help with this called render wizard, and this will look for a form view template for each step. So we'll need to create those views under the views user steps directory here. Let's make two files, one for uh, personal.html.erb and one for the social step, social.html.erb. For now, I'm just going to add the words social and personal into here, just so we can distinguish between these two views. So with all of this in place, we should be able to access any specific step through the URL by calling user step slash personal, and that will render out that personal template. And passing social in here will render out that template. So that's what the uh, render wizard method does. It renders out the given template passed in here. And by the way, if we trigger the index action for this controller, it'll redirect us to the first step in the process, which is the personal step. So what we need to do is have the user's new action. Uh, when we submit this form, it uh, directs us to the first step in the process. All right, so when that form gets submitted, it's going to trigger this user's controller create action I have set up. And this is going to save the user and log them in by remembering the user ID in a session. Now, when that happens, we want to redirect them to the first step in the wizard process. So we need to go to the user uh, steps path from this controller. So that'll redirect us to the first step in the process. So now let's try this out. I filled in this signup form and let's submit this form. And this will redirect us to the first step in the wizard. So all we need to do here is add a form for submitting and going to the next step. Now, if we want a form for editing the user on each render wizard step here, we're going to have to first fetch the user. And I'm going to do that inside of this controller and set it to an instance variable. And I already have a method set up called current user. And normally you will if you have some kind of user authentication set up. But if you don't have this, what you can do is just pass in the object's ID when you redirect to the steps controller. So now going to the personal template, I can replace this with a call to form four so that we can edit that user record. 
Now I do need to pass in a URL option to this because normally it'll go to the user's controller and I need it to go to the user steps controller. And I can pass a wizard path a helper method to this which will go to the proper action. And let's pass this in here and end the form. Now I'm just going to paste in the content for this form because it's basically the same fields that I deleted from the other form. And then I just have a submit button that says continue down below. So now when I reload this personal page, it now has the form for editing the personal fields. Now when I click on continue here, it's going to trigger the update action for that user steps controller. And I haven't created that yet. So going to the controller, I need to make that update action, which will work very similar to the show action, where it fetches the current user. But I need to set the attributes based off of the form. So I can say user attributes and set them based off of the user parameters which are submitted through the form. And then one other difference is that I pass in the user object to this render wizard call. Now when you pass in a resource like this, it's going to attempt to call save on this object. And then if that succeeds, it's going to go on to the next step. But if it fails, it's going to render the current step again. So now let's try this out. When we click on continue here, it's going to trigger that update action, which will bring us to the next step because the user model saved successfully. So I'll do basically the same thing for the social template. I'll paste in the content for this form and again, go into the wizard path and it just has the social related fields. So now reloading this page shows us that form with those fields and uh, submitting this is going to trigger that update action again. And since there aren't any further steps, it's just going to redirect to the root of this uh, application, which just shows that I'm logged in. Now, if you want to change that redirect behavior, you can override a method in the controller called redirect to finish wizard, and then handle the redirect however you want. So I'll go to the root URL again, but this time I'm going to pass in a notice option and saying, thank you for signing up. That way we get a little message. The next thing I want to add to this wizard form is a link next to the continue button to skip this step so that the user knows this information isn't required. Now, if you check out the readme, you can find a handy list of methods that Wicked provides. And among this is next wizard path, which will give us a URL to the next step so we can make a skip link. So going to the view template for a step, I'll add a link uh, next to this continue button that says skip this step and then uh, pass in the next wizard path that Wicked provides. And I'll do the same thing in the other step as well. So it shows up on both. So now I have a link to uh, skip this step so that it's more clear that the step is optional. Next, let's talk about validations. For example, let's say I want to validate the format of this Twitter username so someone can't add spaces and so on. First of all, I'm currently not displaying any validation error messages on each step. So I'm going to paste in some error display code that is pretty standard on a form. You'll probably want to move this into some kind of helper method or partial to help remove the duplication across the forms. And now I can just go into my user model and add a validation. So I'll run a validates format of on here and pass in my Twitter username attribute. And let's say without a non word character like that. And the important option to pass in here is allow blank and set that to true. So that way this is an optional parameter. It isn't required to be present. So now when I try to submit this form with an invalid Twitter name, I get a validation error like I expect. Now the big question is, what if I want to validate the presence of a field? So I want to require that a Twitter username is present. Right now I can just continue and submit this form and it creates it successfully. Well, this is where things get a little tricky because uh, when the first step here gets completed, the user record needs to be saved. So we can easily validate the presence of any of these fields on the first step. But if we try to validate the presence of the other fields in later steps, then the record will be invalid on the first step and we'll get validation warnings that don't apply to these fields. So going back to the user model, if we wanted to validate the presence of the Twitter username attribute, we would need to make this validation conditional. So we could add an if option here and define a method called on the social step. So this way we can uh, check which step we're currently on, maybe set an attribute from the controller and uh, make this validation conditional based off of that. Now I won't be going into this fully here. Now, if you need to do this, I recommend you check out the Wicked Wiki because this has an article there explaining exactly the situation. Basically, you need to turn the model into some kind of state machine to keep track of the progress and uh, to make the validations conditional based off of the current status. 
For an alternative solution to this problem, check out episode 217, where I show you how to build a multi-step form from scratch. Now so far, this wizard is pretty much complete, but we've left a lot of duplication between the different steps. You can see the personal template and the social template are nearly identical except for the fields and headline. Everything else is the same. Now this is a perfect case for a partial layout. Let me show you how it works here. First I'll do a little rearranging here to move the title at the top, and I'm going to extract all of this out here into a partial called form. Now instead of rendering this as a partial, I'm going to render it as a layout instead. And you can pass in a block to this and pass in any arguments you want. So I'm going to pass a form builder through this layout. And this means I can move everything I want into that partial layout. So I'll go into there and I can call yield inside of here and pass in the form builder as an argument into that block and add my action buttons at the end there. So that's all we need to do to make this layout form, and we can do the exact same thing inside of the social template as well. And there we go. Here I'm doing the same thing where I'm rendering that form partial as a layout, and passing in the fields as a block. So now everything still works just like it did before. The form renders fine, and now there's no duplication across the different steps. Well, that's it for this episode on Wicked. Next time you need to make a wizard form with Rails, give it a try. It might do just what you need. In this week's pro episode, I will show you how to deploy a Rails application to Amazon EC2 using the Rubber Gem. With that, you can set up a whole cluster with just a few commands, and it includes some awesome web tools to help monitor the cluster as well. To watch that episode and all other pro and revised episodes, just head on over to railscast.com pro and then sign up there for just $9 per month.